Well, good afternoon. My name is Mark Arif. I'm a cardiac anesthesiologist and also an emeritus professor of anesthesiology at Mayo Clinic College of Medicine. Most recently, I'm the founder and chief executive officer of Transfuse Solutions. Transfuse Solutions is a comprehensive patient blood management and data company. We are experts at education, clinical engagement, and data metrics and analytics. Today we're going to talk about making the case for patient blood management. So first of all there's a couple of clinical opportunities that we need to think about with the concept of patient blood management. And The first is, is that blood transfusion is the most commonly prescribed medical procedure in the United States. Second thing we have to remember is that decisions on how blood is transfused are frequently uh, very subjective. They're not standardized and in many cases they're highly variable. As a result of that variability and the lack of standardization in those decisions to transfuse, this overused medical procedure has now been deemed as one of the five most common procedures that you should avoid if you're hospitalized. And that's just not me saying it, but rather that's the American Hospital Association. Blood transfusion, the decision to transfuse, is a complex medical decision. There is a need for sophisticated clinical decision support. And part of the reason for this is because the therapeutic efficacy of blood is really unproven when it comes to mild or moderately bleeding patients. There is no question that in hemorrhaging patients, in trauma patients, blood is life-saving. However, in those patients with little to no clinical bleeding, transfusion may not always be necessary. We also know that the counter argument is actually true and that transfusion avoidance has been proven to reduce complications, to save lives, and to reduce expenditures in, again, patients with mild to moderate bleeding. And finally, in today's healthcare environment, the term disruption is, is very frequently used. And we think of disruption as being actually a good term. We think of disruption as not being a dirty word, but rather disruption, especially in the context of patient blood management, is good for our patients, it's good for the people taking care of our patients, and it's good for our institutions. The other thing we need to think about today is that we are in a different regulatory environment. And we are all being attacked by the Accountable Care Act, by Joint Commission standards and guidelines, by the American Hospital Association statement that I just mentioned, as well as safety and outcome reporting. The interesting thing for me is that comprehensive patient blood management responds to all of these threats with a single mission. So why is transfusion bad? Well, this is a large study in which complications were noted to be increased with transfusion in a large population of patients having heart surgery. Specifically, you can see here in the far column the number of units that were transfused, and I've outlined two units that were transfused in cardiac surgery patients, and looking at a more than doubling of the infection outcome or more than doubling of the ischemic outcome in patients who received those two units of blood. What we mean by infection is certainly things such as pneumonia and urinary tract infections that occur in many patients who are hospitalized. But more importantly, we're also talking about sternal wound infections or vein graft uh, site infections in cardiac surgery patients. When we talk about ischemic outcomes, we're talking about heart attacks and strokes and peripheral vascular events. And these all go up when blood is transfused. In fact, if you take this and move it outside of cardiac surgery. As an example here, you can see that restrictive transfusion practices in facilities where heart surgery is done would also be practicing restrictive transfusion practices in orthopedic surgery. And the converse is true. Those hospitals that transfuse a lot for one procedure tend to transfuse a lot for another procedure. Well, patient blood management saves money. This is a great study by Dr. Bruce Spees and his group from Virginia Commonwealth University where they documented a reduction in mortality, in renal failure, and in mechanical ventilation time in patients who did not receive a blood product 
while or after having heart surgery. Further on, if we take a look at the Cochrane Collaboration, which looks at a number of studies, looks at high quality studies and comes up with a general consensus, what they were able to demonstrate was that in fact, if you have a restrictive transfusion protocol, your incidence of death, heart attack or MI, and congestive heart failure went down, and it went down substantially. Furthermore, we know that blood transfusion is expensive. In work doc done by Dr. R.A. E. Shander and colleagues, Dr. Shander being one of the fathers of patient blood management, he was able to demonstrate that it's not just the acquisition costs that hospitals have to pay for, but rather they have all kinds of other expenses that they must account for. These expenses vary from hospital to hospital, but if you look at the, look at the two uh, bar, bar, sets of bars on the left here, these are East Coast hospitals, and here you have the acquisition cost of blood being between $200 and $250, and yet the total cost to transfusion is well above that, sometimes three, four, five times as much as the acquisition cost. The two hospitals that are uh, depicted on the right side of this graph are both from Europe, and because of the way Europe has subsidized health care and many of the costs associated with health care are provided by the government, those numbers don't quite translate to, and compare well with, your, with U.S. numbers. Finally, I think there's something that's really important. A new study just came out recently. Dr. James in the Journal of Patient Safety came out and said, look, we know that in the past, the Institution of Medicine, the IOM, said that there are between 50 and 100,000 preventable deaths due to, me due to medical error every year in the United States. Well, Dr. James's work came out and said, look, we really believe, he really believes, that is, that the true number of preventable adverse reactions in the United States every year may be as high as 400,000 deaths and as high as four to eight million serious harm incidents. Now, blood transfusion is most likely part of that. In fact, if you look at relative death rates, we see about 600,000 patients in the United States or people in the United States die every year from heart disease and about the same number from cancer. We also have a feel that perhaps as many as 100,000 deaths might be attributable to blood transfusion. In fact, if you believe Dr. Bruce Spies, a well-known expert in this area, he thinks that number is much, much higher than that. Nonetheless, patient blood management is something that helps to reduce complications, it helps to save lives, and certainly helps to reduce hospital expenditures. So we at Transfuse Solutions are in the business of improving patient outcomes by reducing unnecessary transfusion. And we do this through transformational, evidence-based products and services with our education, change management, and data-driven solutions. We see the four main components of patient blood management as being informatics, clinical decision support and education, along with culture change. So what is comprehensive PBM? Well, here's the list here, and we can discuss this further, but the bottom line is it's about imparting clinicians with the right information to make the right clinical decision for that individual patient at that point of care. We build PBM by developing clinical expertise, which we have by designing and recruiting teams, which we have. And we help hospitals design and develop clinical science for their patient population, develop consensus in clinical algorithms, and engage with their doctors and their nurses and other clinicians. And finally, Transfuse Solutions looks at blood transfusion as both a supply and a demand part of an equation. What we mean by that is on the supply side, we have blood centers, blood donation facilities, and hospital blood banks. And on the demand side, we have clinicians, hospitalists, surgeons, anesthesiologists, and other doctors who are involved in making the decision to transfuse. And so we see patient blood management being very comprehensive when we look at both the supply and the demand side. Transfuse Solutions offers a suite of uh, offerings, uh, multi-platform education, expert clinician engagement, as well as clinical decision support and informatics, that help provide solutions to your patient blood management problems. We invite you to engage Transfuse Solutions because we allow you to get speed to implementation. 
We, are, we have some of the best in class experts on our staff. We have a very cost effective offering and our return on investment is very significant, typically a five up to 15 X return. So thank you so much for listening today. I hope we've made the case for patient blood management. Whether you use our services or not, patient blood management is very important in the conduct of patient care in this day and age. Thank you.